I want to read the 23rd Psalm, and I'm going to ask Stephen to come up and speak about his dad. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Stephen. Good afternoon. Um, thank you for coming to honor my father's life. Um, many, many thanks to my niece Stephanie, Ron, and their family for everything that they did for him. <clears throat> Others asked me, um, you know, about my dad. They, they, they asked me if my parents were alive, and they asked me about my dad. And, and I was always able to answer that my dad has the best care ever. So, thank you. <clears throat> so story time. <laughs> Dad loved a good story. And uh, he, it was interesting. Um, he didn't really tell all of the stories about his background or his history. But I loved when we had family gatherings. Because then the stories would come out. <clears throat> um, Uncle Noel... Uncle Norse, Aunt Mary Elizabeth, and Uncle Dorsey would get together. Um, and and then, then you would hear the honorary things that went on, the adventures they had, and the fun that they had in life um, being a family. Um, Ray Norman Roberts Jr., he was born in 1927. So he grew up in rural West Virginia during the Great Depression. Is a, a challenge to grow up at that time, but that's what they knew, and they had a lot of joy. Um, how did my dad learn to be a nice guy? I mean, everybody that's here, if you're going to think about my dad, you're going to go, man, he was a nice guy. Um, and, and really, he, he got that from my grandfather. He got that from Raven Lauren Roberts Sr., my grandfather taught a lot of nice lessons through his actions and his words. Um, he never met a stranger, and, and it, it, it came right on through my dad. My dad learned all of those lessons very well. Um, dad was always trying to help somebody. Um, <coughs> dad... Uh, he was raised with two brothers, I mentioned Norse and Noel, and a sister Mary Elizabeth. And then one of the things that I didn't know until later in life is that really Uncle Dorsey grew up as a, um, Grandpa took in Uncle Dorsey. Uh, there was not that much of an age gap and, and they grew up really uh, almost adopted and my dad turned out adopted me and my sister. <clears throat> so, um, Dad worked on a family farm. He uh, worked for the gas company as a surveyor. He loved traipsing through the hills of West Virginia. Uh, he knew a lot about the geography and the hills. Um, he spent time in the United States Marines during Korea. Um, <laughs> There's some interesting parts of that. Uh, my dad, um, I've seen him take a string and open a padlock, a combination padlock, and he like <laughs> takes him like 30 seconds and it's open. It's like so he was he was in marine intelligence. He he didn't actually go to Korea, but he trained and uh, 
the war ended before he was deployed there. Um, I see him pick a lock with a bobby pin, um, locked his keys in the garage and didn't want to break the door to get him and went in the house and got a bobby pin and came back out and fiddled with a couple of minutes, pop, it's open. And, and so, you know, stories that maybe not everybody knows. Um, my dad was a tough guy uh, when it came down to it. Um, I know he was working on the car and I don't remember exactly whether the wrench slipped or he, how he did it, but he smashed his ring finger with his wedding ring on. And uh, his, his finger was swelling up and, and, and the, the ring was you know, choking off the circulation in his finger and, and he was like certain that, that he was going to lose his finger if, if something didn't happen. So he took a screwdriver and slid it under between his finger and the ring and then had me get a file and file a ring off. And, and you know, he's there with a smashed finger and I'm there trying to file and, you know, I, I, I wasn't very good at it so I know it had to hurt, but um, he was a tough guy. He, he never said anything about that and he got the ring replaced immediately, so don't, don't, don't worry about that. Um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. There's, a, there's an investment author out there that, that writes about how to invest and um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, uh, they, they had different styles of, of how they did stuff. But when I think of Rich Dad and Poor Dad, my dad, the only time I ever saw him really cry besides a funeral, um, was when he didn't have anything to give to somebody who he thought was in need. So, it, it wasn't all about money. Uh, he, uh, he was very rich in other ways. Um, actually, I want to um, talk about a couple of his favorite things. I know everybody here knows them and, and they if you have something I'm, I'm gonna get to that if you have something you want to mention I, I'd appreciate it but some of the things that I know that dad were his favorites was black walnuts he loved black walnuts and um, I at one point in my career I was I was traveling for work and and a lot of places I would go I would I would search out black walnuts and I would send him home a black walnut treat from wherever I was. Um, Dad loved homemade ice cream. Um, some of the Adkins are here. Um, we spent many an evening in the backyard with an old hand crank wooden tub. They sit there and crank that thing. But um, yeah, homemade ice cream. He, he was partial to homemade ice cream. Um, Dad liked to play dominoes. I, I don't know how many people here knew that. He was quite the domino player. Um, Dad, of course, loved fishing. Um, he fished, though, for something to eat. He, he was never a sport fisherman. He wasn't out to win any contests. Um, I, I didn't particularly enjoy fishing, but I learned a very good lesson from that, from my dad, is I enjoyed the time with my dad. Didn't matter what we were doing. And, and if he could tell you today, it's what he would tell you. Enjoy the time with the people. Um, a dad had a favorite dog. Dog's name was Old Black. Um, I never um, knew that till later in life. He just um, sometimes getting the stories out of him was tough. He was all about the other person. He was all about wanting to know about you. Um, he didn't think that that you had to know about him. Dad liked to sing. Uh, he was always singing. Um, at one point in his, his life, he played the banjo a bit. He played bluegrass banjo. Um, 
His favorite TV show, far as I know, was Hee Haw. Um, and he, uh, we, we gathered there, the, all of us gathered on the couch. We watched Hee Haw together. Uh, Dad uh, loved reading his Bible. Um, and I'm going to let Will handle the religious side of this. Um, but that was in the list of his favorite things. Dad was a teacher um, through his words and his deeds. Um, <clears throat> there's a saying that nice guys finish last. But um, my dad had a, a different ending to that. He wasn't out to win competitions. He wasn't out to get ahead of somebody else. But my dad went to sleep peacefully every night. And he was much happier in life for not being a competitive, I gotta be better than you person. Dad never met a stranger. He got that partly from grandpa. Um, he was a good Samaritan. You needed help, Dad, Dad was there. Um, Dad always wanted to make sure that um, you had food. And if you ever came to visit, the only thing that Dad would criticize you on is you were leaving too early. He wanted you to stay. Why do you have to leave? Can you just stay a little longer? <clears throat> um, I'll leave you with a, a thought from um, a country vet. When I lost my um, my first dog, um, a country vet told me, he goes, you know, it's okay to cry now. You miss him. But wait, the way you got to go on you got to remember the smiles. you got to remember how happy they made you. A quote on a beach in Key West by Audrey Hepburn. The best thing to hold on to in life is each other. Thank you. Junior was the last one. His brothers, his sister, his wives, Rosella, sweet lady. Then no, we called her out of the many pearls. All the memories, things that flood my mind. To Sharon and Stephen, and was, I thank Stephen for those words. They're hard to say, but we need to do that. Junior was the longest serving elder we had, I believe. He's so important. I'm going on my 41st year there, and he was there when I got there. And I've laughed with him, and I've cried with him. I've gone fishing with him. But I've never called him Ray Bunnell. I always called him Junior. But when we were alone, I called him June Buck. My name was June Buck. <laughs> and the other day, my wife Betty and I got to go Sunday a week ago to see Junior. And Junior, I think at first he didn't know what, who I was, but he knew me before it was over. And he won a prayer. I always won a prayer. His life was the church was his family, of course. But he wore cars out bringing people to church. Brand new cars. Junior wore them out bringing people to church. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, it really sums Junior up. In verses 6 through 8, the Apostle Paul was almost out of this life. It's almost gone. It's dying. For I'm now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. 
I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. It's true that Junior was very tough, but he was very kind. And Junior could get away with things that no one else could. If he threw a law on me on you, you might be in trouble. Sometimes if he ate too much, it was law on me. But he got up one time, he just, he was just to me comical. He got up one time to say something in the church building, make an announcement, and he started out by I don't recommend all speakers start out this way. He started out by saying, some of you people make me sick. And I tell you, everybody came to him and said, is it me? Did I make you? No. I don't know what he was thinking. But I, I learned a lot from Junior. I was traveling down through West Virginia and Hamlin with him. And he had me pull over, stop the car. I said, why? Just pull over. Look over there. I see it. There's a car in the truck. See it? Yeah. Two members of the church. One cut the other in half with a shotgun. I said, what kind of place have you brought me to? <laughs> I mean, stories like that. <laughs> and he was just comical. He was walking in a church building one time after Roselle had passed. He had to dress himself. And the colors were magnificent, like a rainbow. And he's walking in the church building with me, and he looked down, and he said, Law me, I look like a clown. I said, yes, but you're dressed well. <laughs> but I tell you that these words from the Apostle Paul really sum him up. Because he did fight that good fight. He did finish that course. A course is a race. And in the race in this life, only one's going to be the winner. But in the Christian race, all can be winners if they're faithful in the day. And so he did finish that course. He did keep that faith. And you know, Jesus said in Matthew 24, 13, He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. And so... I have so many memories, so many things, so many places that Junior and I would go together to visit, to take food. Middle of the night, he'd call and say, somebody needs a prescription, come on, I'll meet you. And I'd say, okay. I'd call him and say, I need to go do this, and come on, I'll meet you. He'd say, okay. But one time, we were together and he said, I'll follow you up to my house. I wish he hadn't said that. I wish. It's really true that I can't find my way out of a paper bag. And so I said, okay, I'll find this place when they lived in the trailer. We were all over his silver boy. He was following me and I thought, I wish he'd just get ahead of me and take me to his house. I could not find his house. So finally he did get ahead of me and said, come on. And that prompted him to tell people, Asking Will Montgomery directions is like asking the devil how to get to heaven. <laughs> I'm mean, just things he'd say. I want to read a couple scriptures to you. And I'll tell you, your memory is what is important, what Stephen said. Just thinking back, and that's what's going to keep you in these days, is thinking about those good times. I could tell you so many things. Memory is the thread that binds life together. Memory is a gallery wherein hang the scenes of life. Memory is a phonograph of the voices of the past. Memory is a magic carpet to carry us back to days gone forever. Went down with Junior and Rosella to Knowles. The smartest thing Knowles did was marry Montgomery. She's here. <laughs> and we spent three or four days together filmed everything and had one wonderful time. There's a couple things that I want to mention in a few verses. 
In Proverbs 3, 5 through 8, I know he knew these and lived these. Trust in the Lord with all of thine heart and lean not of thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thine evil, marrow to thy bones. These are good words. I ran across this little reading and it really sums up Junior's life. I shall pass through this world but once. If therefore there be any kindness I can show or any good thing I can do, let me do it now because I shall not pass this way again. He knew that. He understood that. And he knew that you needed to take the Bible. It's the manual for your life. And follow that and do what it said. And he did. He was faithful in the dead. And you know, that's really what counts. That's really what counts. That's what made him rich rich. Revelation 21, 4, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away. In Revelation 14, 13, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, yea, saith the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow then, Junior Roberts' works will follow him as long as we're alive. The example in John 14, 1 to 6. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If we're not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know, and Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. And I want to echo what Stephen said. Junior and Eileen, and Junior in these last days had the best care in the world to be with these loving people. With Stephanie and Brian and family and that made, made his day. Yes, he, he did a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful job. In Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. In Acts 20 and 32, and now, brethren, I commend you to God and the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified. I think of Junior, I think of Philippians 1.21. For me to live as Christ, to die is gain. The world wouldn't understand how death could be gained. But he knew. And in Psalm 116, verse 15, precious in the sight of the Lord are the death of his saints. And then this one he understood. In Ecclesiastes 7, 1, a good name is better than precious ointment and the day of death than the day of one's birth. The world couldn't understand it. How could the day of your death be better than the day of your birth? It's what you've done in between that. It's how you've lived. And he, it's so true, he never met a stranger. I was over in my office and he was over in the library one day. And I was working in the office on a lesson. He was over in the library doing whatever he did over there. And a person called that I had had a lot of dealings with. And believe me, I went the second mile with this person, the third mile. And I made my mind up that day I was going to stop. I wasn't going to help that person. So the person called. They were in the hospital, wanted me to go and get their husband and get these clothes and come up and get them. And I'm not sure they were even released because that very person escaped from the hospital one night and got into my house, <laughs> into my living room, barged right in. I called the police and I said, take this person out. I said, can't, you let him in. I didn't let him in. They barged in. So I said to this person that day, no. And they called back, no. And they called back, no. And I heard this voice. 
Junior Roberts. You know you're going to go. I'll go with you. Let's go. We went. Had to wake the husband up, get those clothes. Go to the hospital and hope she wasn't escaping. They were really letting her. Romans 12, 15. Rejoice with them that do rejoice. Weep with them that weep. We do not weep because he didn't have hope. He has tremendous hope. We weep because he's not here. It says in Psalm 56, 8, that God puts our tears into a bottle and writes them in his book. That's a tremendous thing. To know that God's concerned about us this hour when we're hurting at the loss of one who has done so many things for the cause of Christ and so many things for us. To his children, his grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, to all of you, friends and family and church that's here. I want to remind you of the book of Acts. They heard in Acts 2.37. They believed in Acts 2.37. They repented of their sins in Acts 2.38. They confessed Christ in Acts 8.37. They were baptized in Acts 2.38. And they were faithful in Acts 2.41 and 42. Don't ever forget the things that he taught he taught many, many things. He was a Bible class teacher, but he was a teacher of his life, as Stephen said. He taught so many things. Let's pray. Father of heaven, we're so thankful that we had Junior for so long, and he taught us so much. We're so thankful for his life, for his following Christ, or he's bringing people to Christ, bringing them back when they left the Lord. Be with this good family not only today, but in days to come, that they never forget who he was and what he taught them. Help us all. We ask this all in Jesus' name.